I'm joined now outside the courthouse in Amarillo by NPR national correspondent Sarah McCammon. She's among the small few to witness this crucial hearing inside the courthouse today. Sarah, thank you for making time for us today. First, just tell us what the arguments inside My that pleasure. court that courthouse was like, uh, were like, and 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 how the judge uh, Judge Kesmerick seemed to be receptive to either side. Well, first of all, it was witnessed by a pretty small group. Only a few dozen people can fit inside the courtroom here, so that meant limited access for both press, the press and the public. And I should mention, you know, this courtroom does not allow recording. The judge kept that rule in place, so there was no recording, no cameras. And also the judge denied a request from a government watchdog group to live stream the proceedings to the public. So it was really witnessed by a small group of people. And what I saw in there was basically the plaintiff, which is a group of anti-abortion medical um, practitioners and organizations who have filed the lawsuit here in Amarillo challenging the FDA's approval of Mifepristone. Uh, as you know, that drug has been on the market for more than 20 years. The group laid out their arguments against it and they boiled down to criticisms of the approval process dating back to, to when Mifepristone was first put on the market in the year 2000. Um, on the other side, we heard from lawyers representing the FDA, the Department of Justice lawyers uh, on their behalf, who argued that uh, this, this drug has been in widespread use for two decades plus now. It has a very strong safety record, according to major medical organizations. Uh, there was, you, you mentioned this before, and I think it's worth highlighting this, a very small number of people, you're one of the few who got, who got to listen. Um, we know that this was intentional uh, because there was a scoop by the Washington Post that the Judge Kaczmarek took the unusual step of intentionally delaying public notice of the hearing planned for Wednesday morning in Amarillo. That would later come out. But the idea, he said, was he told people what it was going to be. He didn't want it getting out. He didn't want a lot of people. He expressed security or safety concerns. But in the end, um, the sort of close-heldedness was intentional on the part of Judge Kaczmarek, how would you describe his demeanor, his questions in the course of the hearing today? You know, Chris, he asked a lot of questions. That was one thing I noticed. And he asked questions of both sides. I did notice he seemed to sort of recap the positions, the arguments of particularly of the plaintiffs, um, just seeming to try to understand what they were saying. And a lot of his questions had to do with sort of what he should do next or what he could do next. He asked both lawyers for both sides, you know, essentially, if I were to rule in favor of the plaintiffs, of these, you know, anti-abortion advocates in some way, what should that look like? Should that look like a wholesale removal of the drug from the market or perhaps some other half measure? All right, Sarah McCammon, who is in that courthouse, one of the few today, uh, joining us live from Amarillo, Texas tonight. Thank you very much.